Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Matt from Rocky's War Room, and tonight we have another great unboxing for Victory at Sea. This time, the USS Mighty Mo, Missouri. So let's dig in. So like with most of our unboxings boxings that we've done so far for Victory at Sea, we have with us tonight, Nache. Howdy, folks. And, of course, Mr. McMurray. What up? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and we're finally getting to uh, one of the most uh, anticipated Victory at Sea ships, the most elusive, I should say, as well, uh, to find on the Internet to buy or purchase, and that would be the USS Missouri. And it is one ship, and I've heard lots about it, and I live in that state, so this is probably going to be my favorite ship because of that. Not Hell yeah! <laughs> oh, I love you, McMurray. Uh, only the mighty Yamato displaced more than the massive, very, very yet very fast Iowa-class battleships. The last battleship to be commissioned by the USA, USS Missouri, known as the Mighty Mo acted as venue for the Japanese surrender in World War II. Iowa-class ships saw service for uh, far beyond the Second World War and were upgraded with modern electronics, weapon systems, and cruise missiles. The USS Missouri was finally decommissioned in 1992 after a distinguished career. And it's a resin ship, and you get ship card and damage sliders. Let's open this up, boys. Ooh. Can't wait. Can't wait. So, how about, uh, <laughs> so what do you guys think? Should I, yeah, should I open this? Should I show you guys? I don't yeah, know. make it happen. Cool. All right, I'm going to set that aside. Super, super excited for this. <clears throat> while, I, I, uh, <laughs> while you're fiddling with cellophane, mm -hmm. uh, Graham Riggs with us uh, tonight. Welcome, Ooh. Graham. He says he's ready and able. He Next said thing. that uh, six minutes ago. Oh, before okay. we even started. <laughs> <laughs> In front of the camera. Graham Rigg, is that any di any relation to Diana Rigg? <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, sliders. <laughs> we get Got sliders. Plenty of those. Plenty of those, because you know what happens with these. All right. They'll be eaten by dogs. Mm -hmm. What happens in sliders stays in sliders. What? Oh, McMurray. Wait, rare. what? Huh? <laughs> what happens in sliders stays in sliders. Uh, so what happens in sliders winds up in the bathroom. Don't even all right. Warlord Games resin kits. They have uh, instructions on how to care for them, how to clean them, um, and uh, in case they you know warp, they tell you what they can you can do about them uh, and 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 how they work and things like that. There's included in all the kits. Then before we look at the card, we have in assembly instructions for the the. Uh, USS Missouri, which looks like this one here has one, two, three, four, five, six implements to put on it. Pretty standard, I think, across the board for all these ships. Uh, as we have been opening them up, they typically have all the turreted weapons, the bridge, and um, a couple other things. Like, uh, what did, would you call that? A tripod launcher or something like that? Or that, that, that oh. There's an aircraft crane. Yeah, it's a crane. I knew that. I'm just saying in general. Yeah. Um, all, the most of the other ships have cranes or uh yeah. the uh catapults catapults yeah guys Which, the real question is does this come with a little metals like one of the bits on here is it pester nimitz teabagging the japanese delegation no, no okay no so um no it doesn't <laughs> it has a reasonable a, question <laughs> it has a uh a wonderful uh you know painted um display uh and shows you a little bit a few close-ups of what they did and it gives a painting guide of what colors they used uh they used army painter and vallejo on this one and you can paint the ocean with a mixture of this and you paint the ship with a mixture of these colors uh looks like vallejo light gray green gray luftwaffe uniform and dark blue uh, and they will say whether or not they're army painter or vallejo so and they give you the numbers which is which is nice i i do like that uh especially yes. for someone who does not know what to do with these <laughs> painting wise 
um, like myself. I'll probably use these as a light guide. It just depends on, I'm probably going to paint the ships on whatever measure they had in 1944, like it says on the ship there and most of the other ones. So now let's look at the card. Ooh. So this comes in at a whopping 115 hull points. And it's crippled at 38 hull points. It's got a flank speed uh, of six inches, same as the uh, Yamato, and an armor of six plus. So uh, uh, six plus is uh, you got to roll d6 on the armor in order to uh, you know take armor points away from him. So that's uh, that's pretty good. You have to roll six. That's beefy. Mm-hmm. And of course, uh, the ship comes with three turrets, uh, and they're three times 16 inch guns. And then you have light guns. There's 25-inch light guns. Wow. Okay. Uh, and they're five-inch guns. And an AA battery, of course. And it's got a ton of traits uh, that go along with it, like advanced radar, aircraft three, armor deck, and oh, an armor deck. Okay. Uh, and a torpe torpedo belt three. That's pretty common on most battleships, I've noticed. And it's a whopping 850 points. So it is literally what? 150 cool. point, 150 points less than a uh, Yamato. Yeah. They, they must be given uh, a lot of points for the guns. They are. They aren't all, again, it's the same thing like normally. It's hard to mimic ridiculously superior crew training and like fire control and damage control. Yeah. Because in all actuality, if this thing ever ran up into uh, the Yamato, it would in very short order, chew the Yamato up and spit it out in classic Missouri fashion. Well, <laughs> well, it yeah. would probably hit the Yamato before the Yamato even knew it was there. Exactly. To be, to be honest. Because radar is a good thing, and those 16-inch guns will fire over the horizon. Yep. Yeah, and there's actually rules for that, firing yeah. over the horizon. So, uh, And with the advanced radar, it helps um, in the rules if you have advanced radar with uh, firing over the horizon. So, Not only that, uh, but the... Like, the fire control on the Yamato would probably assume it's some kind of destroyer or something because they have problems with, you know, looking oh, yeah. at ships and understanding what they are. Uh, there, there's four four ships in the class, which is the Iowa, the Missouri, the New Jersey, and the Wisconsin. Uh, it's 57,540 tons uh, with a whopping 32 and a half knots speed. It's got a crew of 2,858 men and uh, it was commissioned in 1943 and it's 887 feet long. Um, there's several refits, but, uh, they're bro broke down by which class. So the Iowa class has two refits, one in 44 and 45. The New Jersey has one in 43 and 45. And the Mighty Mo has one in 44 and one in 45, which they changed the AA batteries to attack dice 16, uh, and the local three for 15 points. So, um, and then they increase their AA batteries. So this 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 ship starts off with just advanced radar, um, and it has one less turret on it than the Yamato, doesn't it? Nope. No, several less. What? S no, it's got the same number of turrets. The big difference is the Missouri or the Iowa class ships have 16 inch 50 caliber uh, guns, whereas the Yamato had 18.1 inch guns. 46 so, caliber, right? Yeah, 46 caliber. Okay. Um, now, for the uninitiated, when I say caliber, it's not the same as a pistol or a rifle. Mm -hmm. A caliber on a naval gun is uh, one Don't. caliber is the width of the diameter. The length of the barrel is measured in calibers. A caliber is one diameter of the gun. So in this situation, a 16 inch 50 is the gun is, has a 16 inch diameter for the shell and it's 50 times 16 inches in length. So it's 800 inches long. It's a right. big, long, big, long barrel, big, long tube that spits hate at a ridiculous distance and speed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just opened awesome. the double wrap. I just opened the bubble wrap, and uh, we have a contender for the hood. <laughs> are, are you impressed? <laughs> you should be impressed, baby. Holy It, it is shit. one of the most beautiful <laughs> ships ever built. Well, the first thing we're going to look at, because I like to tease like that. Oh, yeah. You got to look uh, at the implements, the, 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 uh, the gigas, the, the, the bridge. So the thank you at. Huh. 
All righty then. AT, AKA Rondika. <laughs> we'll just say thank you, Rondika. We'll just say that from now on. So there we go. There's the implements. There's the turrets, uh, three turrets, uh, the bridge, and then the small piece and the, uh, what'd you call that crane? crane. crane Aircraft crane. crane. That, that small piece you're pointing at that's uh the aft uh boiler funnel oh boiler funnel okay let me see if i can it's a smokestack Focus. the other smokestack is right behind the bridge there you, go. there you go and that's an antenna uh one of the radar antennas on the back of that funnel naval uh Grognard says naval barrel length that equals diameter of the shell multiplied the cal the multiplied the caliper of the weapon. Yes. And Hex Hex says wanted to say hey, but I am uh, assaulting Finland <laughs> right now. <laughs> okay, <laughs> assault away. <laughs> now I'm gonna leave this a bit out of focus because I'm going to bring an absolutely gorgeous resin model into the. Yeah, screen. you are. And it's gonna have sound effects. Mm -hmm. Holy Christ. <laughs> it's exactly my point. It's a beautiful ship. Look at that thing. Now, all those little T's you see. Oh, man. You know, the little T-shaped things. Those yeah. are 20, those are 20 millimeter guns. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. So that's why they have so many. Uh huh. And that's then the are. little circles with the, like the double T's, those are 40 millimeter guns. I'm, I wonder if there's no way that's the appropriate number because I want to say, didn't Missouri have like well over 40? Um, uh, she had 80 40 millimeter guns, which makes uh, 20, 20 gun tubs. Because they were quad mount guns. That yeah. I was about and to say. then she had forty nine twenty millimeter guns. Yeah. So that's the wild thing. Even with that many modeled onto the ship, they're taking extreme artistic license with the actual number that should be there. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know it's really dumb letting kamikazes hit your ship. Yep. Yep. Letting <laughs> be successful. Letting comic kamikazes. <laughs> yeah, go on, off, go on. Um, no, I'm and then on the stream. The the other thing um, is those twenty five inch guns are also used for anti aircraft uh, purposes as well. Yep. Well, come on, Todd, come on in here, buddy. You know how Todd, to do it. Todd's a Missouri boy. He'll enjoy some of these Missouri facts that I've looked up. Yep. Look at how detailed that is. That's ridiculous, man. Yeah. It it's to me okay. it is probably has the most beautiful lines of any World War II battleship out there. Don't get me wrong, the Bismarck is pretty, the, the hood is pretty, the the Italians have pretty ships as well. Well, we're gonna look at Italians here pretty soon. <laughs> but the Missouri, the the Iowa class battleships are just amazing. And if they had ever been built, the Montanas were even more amazing. Yeah. Th basically add another 50 feet in length to that mm. and a second turret in the in uh, the stern, in the aft part of the ship. Like, yeah, Montana was basically every uh, German Project Z commander or engineer's wet dream. Just oh, yeah. Floating, yeah. Just on the whole gun. Well... My favorite two ships are our Missouri and the Hood. Now, one thing I'm a little disappointed about is on their uh, on their upgrades. Mm. They don't have the Tomahawk missiles. Yeah, no. you need the '96 refits. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> because the 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 Iowa class ships were not only used at the end of World War II, but they also uh, Missouri and Wisconsin. I believe it was Missouri and Wisconsin fought in Korea. Uh, all four of them fought in Vietnam and all four of them served uh, in the eighties and nineties uh, during the Gulf war. I mean, that's uh, incredible. They, they kept those ships that long. I mean, yep. 
Well, insert. they would they would put they would decommission them, put them into storage in Bremerton, Washington, and then the Navy would say, you know, we do really like those big guns. So let's put, go ahead and pull them back out and have some fun with them. And by fun, yeah. blowing the dog piss out of anybody that got in their way. <laughs> um, the night of the night of uh, the the first shots fired during first Gulf War uh, back in 1991, uh, Missouri fired some ungodly amount of Tomahawk missiles um, towards their targets, as well as just lobbing shells left and right into uh into iraq and the the iraqis had no damn clue what was going on because they weren't expecting 16 inch artillery to fall on top of them yeah i'm about to say i would imagine basra didn't appreciate getting the dog piss kicked out of it but that's what happens yeah especially with the accuracy you can get with naval gunfire compared to traditional bombs at the time right now, Chief, you got the Idaho. If I were you, I'd go out and get this. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm I'm going to as soon as I can. It, it is gorgeous. Oh yeah, absolutely, it is. Uh, and I'm I'm so impressed. You know, the the value is obviously in the eye of the beholder, but I I'm I'm seriously impressed. If you're not impressed with the way this looks, I mean, for twenty five bucks, it gives it's worth me to worth it to me. Some people it might not be, but I mean. I, every ship I look at, there's so much detail on them. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I'm almost afraid to paint them. Nah, don't be. You know? Um, but this is this is as big as the Yamato space. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely it is. You know, like I said, it's, it's as long, not as wide. It, it's about... 20 feet narrower yeah it's but narrower. That, that's also what makes her faster yeah yep. mm-hmm. physics yeah, baby more agile oh yeah uh the the i the iowa class battleships has a smaller turning radius than the fletcher class destroyer yep how cool is that that that's that's pretty cool <laughs> So, I mean, uh, you guys want to talk about this or talk about the Missouri or you got any facts or anything you want to say about it? Um, just that she uh, she was laid down January 6th of 41, launched in January of 44. So it took her took them almost three years and a month to uh, get her built. Uh, and then she was commissioned in June of 44. Mm-hmm. Um she was com- decommissioned in 55 recommissioned in 86. So yeah, Missouri, Missouri missed out on Vietnam. She was there for mm-hmm. Korea and there for uh, mm-hmm. Lebanon and, and the Gulf war. Um, she was decommissioned in 92 and then stricken in 95 and is now a museum ship at Pearl Harbor. So you can, you can stand. That'd be cool. Not just stand on the deck of, a World War II veteran uh, piece of machinery, but you can stand where the Japanese signed, signed. the unconditional uh, surrender, surrender to That's the United amazing. States. That's amazing. That's just so cool. Yeah, I was looking just, at pictures of that when I was looking up, looking up, you know, the Iowa class battleships and stuff like that, and see <laughs> that picture with all those sailors sitting on the the size of those turrets. Yeah just looking over and overseeing the Japanese and they're signing the unconditional surrender. It was, a, it was just an amazing photo, you know, um, that's what I came across. So a couple of other things, um, her top speed was 32 and a half knots. And mm-hmm. so if she wanted to get someplace, she could get there fast. She was built specifically to be able to keep up with the Essex class carriers. Um, but her range before she had to refuel, if she just kept at 15 knots, half her speed, basically, mm-hmm. she could travel 15,000 miles. Jesus. Basically, two, almost two-thirds of the way good. around the world before she had to refuel. The thing's got a big enough gas tank to be an OPEC nation, is what not Jay is trying to say. Exactly, yeah. It's fantastic. And the thing is, is by the time that she came about 
the Navy had figured out how to do uh, what's known as uh, unrep, which is uh, where they could refuel her from a fleet tanker while still at sea. Yep. So she didn't have to go to port to refuel. They could refuel her as she was going to wherever she was wanting to go and kick the crap out of whatever she wanted to kick the crap out of. Also, I have use for my USS Ohio. Yeah. Cool. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. All right, Mighty Mo. Here it comes. <laughs> um, Take the Mighty Mo and a, and a USS Ohio against the Amato. There you go. That's the point. Yeah. That's the stuff. Um, her her range belt. Is, go go ahead, McMurray. I was just going to say that the scale range of that ship, though, in order for you to need the Ohio, is like a mile or some shit obnoxious. So oh, yeah, like, a mile. So in terms of if you were moving its maximum distance on the table at mm -hmm. one eighteen hundred scale. Oh no, not a mile. I'm sorry. It'd be like ten miles. Yeah. Oh, okay. You would have to move the ship to that model 10 miles at scale. Mm. No, no, no. That's not at scale. That's right. No, what I'm saying in real life. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. That, that's, you know, the scale at which you're talking about. Um, her armor. Now, her armor mint is, is amazing with the uh, nine 16 inch guns. So, what do they mean in armored deck? I mean, it's, a, I, that, I know. That's what I'm getting to. Okay. Okay. So, her belt armor, that's the armor right at the waterline, basically from the just in front of where the forward turret, uh, the A turret is, back to just behind the Y turret. That was 12 inches of armor plating. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's also true. So, you know, let, let's say she's... Uh, rolling with her destroyers, the de destroyers are getting a little low. The destroyers could come up and uh, fuel off of her. Both back countries. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. I mean, so, I guess you could do that. Yeah. I mean. Uh, so yeah, twelve inch armor there. The barbets. The the you you see the circles where the big where the turrets go. Yeah. Those are called barbets, that the, the the armored column that the turret sits into. Uh, that was eleven inches of armor. So the pick up a ruler. Okay, so eleven inches thick. Yeah, eleven inches wow. thick. Pick up a ruler. That's how thick the armor is. Uh, yeah. And then the deck armor, is it, is underneath it like all the beautiful solid? teak wood, is six inches thick. So, so that would be an armored deck. It would just be yeah. wood and six inches armor, but six so, inches of American steel, baby. So, Matt, the point of that armored deck is that when you're being fired on from like 15 miles away, shells aren't coming in at anywhere close to a flat angle. They're coming in damn near vertical. Yep. It's what's called plunging fire. Okay. So, the reason you have to have an armored deck is because you've got shells not again not just coming in straight onto the side. But, but overhead, but dropping down, yeah, almost like a bomb attack, stuff like that, or kamikaze. Um, oh yeah, kamikaze's b bounced off of her several times. Yeah. Yes, literally yeah. bounced off. But so <laughs> b between those big naval shells and bombs and stuff like that, again, that's why that armor deck is super useful. Because the last thing you need is a shell or again a bomb plunging through, you know, five six decks and then detonating. Which is what happened to the hood. Yep. Who and the well, hell? the hood got hit. Under its belt armor, yeah. allegedly ish, but yes, yeah. How, how in the hell could I have said, uh, oh, not, interested, not interested? There's just so much here. I guess I was waiting for the right game uh, <laughs> to, to learn about uh, World War II naval ships, you know. Well, I mean, that and the right models. I, I, yeah, honestly, I think so. for you, mm -hmm. <clears throat> these are it. One three thousandths is way, way too small. One twenty four hundredth yeah. scale, which is I've got a, just an ass ton of. Um, it's still a little small, I think, for for your your likes and desires. Yeah, you you want a model to be able to show off. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm not saying that in a bad way. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why you prefer 28 millimeter over 15 millimeter. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, I've got tens, so, but I, I don't like. I'm like, eh, yeah, tens. Right, exactly. So. Yeah. I mean, you love you love your 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 Gates of Antares. You love your um, Mythic Americas or yeah, Lavera. Yeah. Exactly. Cowboys. You you love the 28 millimeter stuff because you can really paint it up nice. Well, You're gonna you. love painting the these ships up. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I'm looking I at the Missouri's camouflage, and and it doesn't look like it'd be too hard to do. Um, really, for most uh, of the ship's life, it didn't have camouflage. But, but yeah, but, yeah, and it and it it has it in 1944. So whatever the measures are in 1944, that's the way I'm gonna paint it. I mean, regardless of whatever this on here, but uh, I'll get you the I'll get you the correct uh, color scheme. Yeah. I, I do like this one. I don't like the one that's on the main box. It just seems like it's too bright blue to me. But it's I don't know. It, it, that's that's bad camera. Okay, that's why it's thought. either bad camera or, or somebody did not paint lighting. it properly. Um, because it's it's actually a light gray, dark gray, and dark blue. Yeah, more like the picture here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, buddy. Cool. Uh, so, you guys' final thoughts? What do you think? Uh, good kit. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like so it. I love it. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> phenomenal kit. Um, so I've got again some some fun facts about a the USS Missouri, and then um, I mean to be honest with you, the state of Missouri overall, just for you know general background knowledge, because it's a good thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> as long as it's clean, I don't right? care. Okay, cool. Just. <laughs> I mean, as long as it's not a back. Well, Ozark. You, you you tell me. You tell me, Kansas City, Missouri has more fountains than any world, any city in the world except for Rome, which is pretty cool. Yep, Kansas yeah. City, there you go. Um, you know, it's not go as good Chiefs. as St. Louis. Not as good as St. Louis, but that's okay. The first public kindergarten. We still have in the an US. NFL team. What? <laughs> we still have an NFL team. Yeah, well, take that up with Stan Kroenke. Um, <laughs> it's not my fault. He's a <clears throat> Uh, the first public kindergarten in the U.S. was established in 1873 in St. Louis, Missouri. Yep. Um, Missouri is only one of two states with a state grape, which is the Norton grape. So we got that going for us, which is great. Yeah, we have a grape. We have a we grape. We do. Um, also, we have the Gateway Arch, which is the tallest man-made monument in the U.S. Which is really cool. I've, I've been up in it several times, and it's really neat. It is super cool. It's terrifying as a child. Um, cause the damn thing moves, uh, yeah. it swings back and forth as you're, as you're uh, standing up there. It as is you're standing up there yeah. If it's windy, uh, heights. I've been there once. I will never go again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If it's windy, uh, wear a diaper, yeah. bring a change of pants. Um, cool, cool, fun facts about the USS Missouri kind of in the same vein as Hitler making, uh, France sign their surrender in the same, um, train car is the armistice was signed flying over the USS Missouri, the flag on the day that uh, the Japanese surrendered, which for anybody keeping score at home was 21st of uh, August, 1945 flying over the <clears throat> Missouri was the flag that flew over Commodore Perry's um, expedition when he opened Japan in 1853. Oh, that's which, cool. Which is that, that's sad. actually a piece of Naval history. I did not know. Yep, that is pretty slick. Um, also known as the first time America rolled into, you know, Tokyo Bay, Bay and said, hey, guess what? You're this open for the, business. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I believe the surrender took place oh, on the starboard side near the uh, behind the um, B turret, I want to say. Uh that being said, interestingly enough, uh, I believe there is still a dent in the teak there from as the, you know, allied commanders or whoever was reading off um, the surrender documents and uh, hit where the Japanese must accept delivery of D's and Shigematsu and Umezu, who are the foreign minister and like head general, whatever. Anyways, the two signing parties of Japan were confused and had to ask what D's were. Uh, and Dougie Mac whipped out his nuts, set them on the desk and said, D's nuts? And, uh, <laughs> that was the beginning of the mental scarring that led the world to anime. And oh, man. Uh, for vending machines. But I should have known better. 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Terrible idea. Long story short, suck it, America. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, McBride. That being said, an, an actual fun fact is virtually every Allied power did have a representative there, including the Dutch, Canadians, and Australians, which really? is pretty <laughs> slick. Yeah. Uh, the Frogs had a had a guy there. New Zealand had a uh, an air mar- air vice marshal there for all like four people in New Zealand who knew how to flew planes at the time. Well, the, them and the sheep. Well, yeah, the Chinese had a representative. The Soviets had a representative. It's kind of cool. Um, now, what but, I yeah. find interesting is, although the Soviets had somebody there, they were not a signatory to the armistice. Uh, there's a picture of Derevyanko signing it. They had never formally declared. They were in a weird, like, kind of war state with Japan. Um, but yeah, they didn't, they didn't, like, do anything, even though the U.S. decided to send them a, just a butt ton of ships in 45. But yeah, there's a picture of uh, Lieutenant General Kuzma Nikolaevich Derevyanko signing it. So, okay, you know. he did it. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. What's it? Okay, you. He was from Ukraine. Jesus, no wonder they sent him all the way out there. That way, he didn't have to go. They didn't, you know, have to send him all the way back to Moscow. They could just dump him in Siberia on the train right back. Yep. Kick. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you roll. <laughs> yeah. But no, so I mean that's that's pretty cool. And then of course you had Nimitz and uh, Douglas MacArthur, which is pretty slick. Um, I'm Very sure cool. that was at least a little bit of uh, fantastic Chester Nimitz holding Douglas MacArthur back from a fantastic little cartoony. Let me at him. Um, but well, would you buy this kit? I mean, I think I already said I was probably going to wind up with a copy of it. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Again, just as a model, a guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's one of those. They are well casted. They're good. They cost right about the same. As a, uh, well, I mean, honestly, I'll let you play it on the table. You know, I'll let you play it on the table. Well, you know? I would hope so. so. You know, at least you'll be able to get, you know, you could bring yours over here once you get paint. Yeah. But, uh, thanks guys for joining me. I really appreciate it. Thank everybody. F- thank you, everybody who watched this, uh, and, and who watched this later. Uh, there will be more. I have the Graf Spay. Um, there's two ships in that kit and we will be doing that sometime in the next couple weeks. Uh, also the Admiral edition, I just found out, uh, from Warlord that the rule books are being shipped out this week. So they should be out hopefully next week or the week after, uh, in people's houses. So that'd be great. And before the end of the month, we're going to review the Admiral edition. Hopefully, um, no guarantee of the rule book. <laughs> so, but uh, very excited. I really want to throw this up against the Yamato, see what happens. You know, uh, you need another, like maybe 150 points worth of ships, maybe one destroyer with it or something like that. But I don't know. Let's put them toe to toe sometime. You know what I mean? Sounds good to me. So, but uh, thanks again. Don't forget to hit that like button. Please subscribe if you haven't. I really appreciate it. Spread the word. Help us grow. I really appreciate that. And last but not least, from me to you, ta-ta. And I will catch you in our next episode of Victory at Sea Unboxings.